When the Coast Guards intercepted this strange blue boat, they had no idea they were stepping into a living nightmare. The mysterious metallic vessel didn't appear on their radar, and as they approached, the situation quickly spiraled out of control. But before we dive into this tale, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any new stories. The team first observed that the boat was significantly larger than they had initially thought. It had an appearance unlike anything they had ever encountered, barely any windows except for a few small glass frames on top. The strangest part was that the boat did not seem to appear on their ship's radar, despite being directly in their line of sight. The crew's captain checked the monitor again, but for some reason, it only detected their own vessel. The boat was a mystery, its blue color almost blending perfectly with the sea's waves, giving it a suspicious aura. At first glance, the boat wasn't that large, so with a full team of strong men, they should have been able to draw it near. But the mysterious thing wouldn't budge an inch. Instead, it was their own boat that was pulled forward. What is this thing? The captain muttered nervously. There's more than meets the eye with this thing. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. The captain ordered Thomas and his colleague Derek to investigate. Despite their hesitation, they stepped aboard the blue boat, carefully placing their first few steps on its deck. As they inched toward a small window that offered little visibility, Thomas spoke. We need to open the window. His voice was steady despite his nerves. With a loud creak, the top hatch opened, revealing a ladder descending into darkness. The two men could see nothing below, adding to their unease, but they pressed on. Venturing downward into the boat, the decision would soon prove to be one they deeply regretted. There's no one here, so who piloted the boat? Thomas asked, confused. Derek shrugged and tried to communicate his findings to the outside crew, but the connection through Derek's walkie-talkie was jittery and words were hard to understand. Then, things got dire in a hurry. A creak was heard above them, and suddenly, the top hatch closed on its own. The coastal boat's captain and the other crew saw this happening, and widespread panic erupted. They tried to ask Thomas and Derek if they were all right, but the communication signal was gone completely. With the hatch closed, the two investigating crew members were cut off from the main group. Thomas and Derek climbed the ladder and stared at their coastal boat in fear, but that would be their final glimpse because the blue boat had a mind of its own and was starting to inundate completely beneath the ocean surface. What the hell is going on? Derek asked, panic-stricken. On the other side, Thomas was still trying to compose himself and did his best to calm his colleague. The two men quickly reached a state of panic, even Thomas, who had tried to keep his cool as long as he could. They slammed their fists against the metal hatch at the top of the ladder, but it wouldn't budge. Just a few seconds later, the boat was completely submerged underwater, and a realization hit Thomas. This wasn't just any boat, it was a submarine. Thomas thought back to the moment they first discovered that strange blue vessel. It hadn't shown up on the radar. It was camouflaged with its blue color, and it blocked out all forms of communication. This boat was incredibly stealthy, but why? What was its purpose? It wouldn't be long before the two fearful Coast Guards would find out, because the submarine was moving to an unknown location, one with great consequences. Until then, Thomas and Derek had nothing to do but wait. The first part of their investigation was the main console on the north side of the sub. It looked straight out of an 80s movie, with heavy-duty buttons and wires running out the back. However, the machine didn't seem to control any part of the ship. That's when Derek called out, Thomas, there's a door over here. Thomas turned around and joined his friend. The two men combined their strength to push the handle downward, hoping it would be enough to open the doorway. But this door, like the hatch above, was too powerful for these desperate men to open. Defeated, they sank to the floor, only to feel the submarine vibrate again, this time ascending. It was the same vibration that occurred when they had sunk down about 30 minutes ago, but this time they were clearly going upward. The two men jumped up from their seated position and hid behind the console on the other end of the boat. Just as they reached their hiding spot, the hatch above opened and three individuals climbed down, making their way to the locked door. When they emerged, they were carrying large packages. What was this place, and what were they taking out? Thomas's mind raced as he tried to make sense of it all. The men were large, bulky in stature, and made repeated trips up and down carrying dozens of large packages to the surface. The process took about 30 minutes, and Thomas and Derek were lucky not to be discovered. 
When the shady men were eventually done unloading the submarine's contents, it was quiet inside the vessel. Neither Thomas nor Derek dared to speak, but they noticed that the individuals had left the top part of the ship open. The two men knew what to do. With Thomas leading the charge, they climbed up the ladder. Once at the top, the Coast Guards felt the cold ocean breeze on their faces. They were in the middle of the ocean, with no land in sight, but around them were four massive floating pillars holding a large oil rig platform. On top, no one appeared to be in sight, and staying inside the submarine was not an option. Derek and Thomas carefully climbed the long ladder connecting the submarine to the main platform above. Once they got there, a huge surprise awaited them. Workers were lifting boxes, and machines were transporting cargo from left to right. They managed to traverse the platform unnoticed, witnessing a secret criminal operation. The traffickers were completely unaware of the two Coast Guards sneaking through the area. Eventually, they stumbled upon a sinister scene, an older man whom Thomas figured was in his mid-sixties. He was well-dressed compared to the others and oversaw the loading of large packages filled with cash and drugs. Thomas and Derek realized they had uncovered a large-scale drug trafficking ring. Thomas and Derek watched with bated breath as the leader raised his hand, signaling for something in the shadows to step forward. What came next sent chills down their spines. A knife was thrust into one of the packages, and when it was pulled out, a fine powder clung to the blade. The moment their eyes locked on the substance, their hearts nearly stopped. As Coast Guards, they'd seen this before. This was a powerful, illegal drug, the kind they were all too familiar with confiscating. And then, everything became very clear. This was an illegal trafficking ring. The criminals were using the stealthy submarine to transport contraband from one location to another. The oil rig platform served as the perfect central point for their operations, situated far enough out at sea to avoid detection. From a distance, it looked like just another ordinary oil rig. Derek felt a mix of nerves and excitement. By sheer luck, they had stumbled upon the mother load of criminal activity. They knew they had to act fast. When Thomas checked the walkie-talkie in his back pocket and saw a signal, the two Coast Guards quickly and quietly snuck away from the leader and found a secluded corner at the far end of the platform. To their surprise, the walkie-talkie worked and they were able to contact their crew. Keeping the volume low, Thomas and Derek explained the situation. The team was relieved to hear they were alive, but when they told them about their location, they were all shocked. However, a new problem immediately arose Thomas and Derek noticed that the submarine was being loaded again, this time likely with drugs. They knew they had to stop it. The two men hurried to the control room, but when they tried to open the door, they found it locked. Suddenly, the well-dressed man from earlier looked up and made direct eye contact with Thomas and Derek. Acting quickly, the two Coast Guards managed to sneak away from the workers and eventually took control of the rig's main operating room. With their efforts, the submarine was immobilized, and the criminals' plans for future shipments came to a grinding halt. Frustration was evident on the leader's face as he ordered his men to break down the door. But just before they could act, coastal reinforcements arrived, supported by a large team of police officers. The traffickers were immediately arrested, left with nowhere to run in the middle of the ocean. Thomas and Derek were released from the control room and honored as heroes for their quick thinking and bravery. What started as a terrifying day ended in victory, marking the biggest bust of their careers. It couldn't have ended any better. What do you think of Thomas and Derek's heroic move? Comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button and smash the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new stories.